Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear a recording describing a trial courtroom and the conduct of legal trials. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Although variations occur in courtroom layouts, this is a description of a standard UK trial courtroom. In a trial courtroom, the judge is invariably seated behind an elevated desk or bench. Adjacent to the bench are the witness stand and a section that is slightly larger to accommodate the court reporter. Behind the court reporter, the bailiff stands against the wall of the courtroom throughout the proceedings. His job is to ensure the court procedure is observed and order is maintained. Directly in front of the judge's bench, located in the central courtroom area known as the well, is a table where the court clerk sits and records court proceedings. Only the bailiff is authorised to cross the well during a court session, to transfer documents between the lawyers and the judge. Any unauthorised crossing of the well is regarded as being extremely disrespectful to the court and is usually expressly forbidden. Off to one side of the clerk's desk is located a table where the defendant and his lawyer are seated. The defendant, also known as the accused, works closely with his lawyer, who is also termed the lawyer for the defence. Across the other side of the courtroom, the lawyer for the prosecution sits with a plaintiff, who is bringing the case against the defendant to court. Close by is the jury box that covers the largest area in the courtroom. It holds 12 members of the public who are responsible for delivering the final verdict on the defendant. All those who are actively involved in court proceedings are in the area of the courtroom termed the bar. Behind the area of the bar is the gallery, which seats spectators who may be relatives of those involved in the court hearing or merely curious members of the public. The bar itself may be an actual physical barrier, such as a railing, or merely a designated area. Apart from the parties to the case and any witnesses, only the lawyers can literally pass the bar. Court personnel and jury members usually enter through separate doors behind the bench. And this is why the term the bar has come to refer to the legal profession as a whole. So that is the court set up. Now on to how the verdict is arrived at and sentence proclaimed by the judge. When all evidence has been given and challenged by both the lawyer for the prosecution and the lawyer for the defence, then the process of reaching a verdict can begin. Prior to the judge's summing up the case, it is normal court procedure for the judge to meet with both lawyers first. In the meeting, what the judge will say is determined by mutual consent between the lawyers and the judge. It is then up to the judge to decide if the summing up will be split into two parts. If this course of action is taken, the summing up will be divided into a legal part and a summary of the facts of the case. 
The legal part is basically a clarification of what the charge is and what has to be proven in addition to any special directives for the case such as the need to respect confidentiality. The summary is given to ensure that all members of the jury are reminded of the essential facts of the case. It is an impartial summary of all the evidence heard during the trial by the jury. After the summing up, the judge will stress the importance of reaching a unanimous verdict. The jury will then retire to consider their decision. If the case is particularly complex, the judge will first issue the jury with a written document, entitled A Route to Verdict. This is essentially a series of questions the jury should pose themselves whilst considering the verdict. The time taken for a jury to reach a verdict can vary from a few hours to several days. If there is a chance that the verdict will not be reached before the end of the court day, then members of the jury are free to go home, on the proviso that they will not discuss details of the case with anyone outside the courtroom. The more serious the case, the longer a jury may take to reach a decision. If the jury continues to struggle to reach a verdict, the judge will deliver a Watson direction, which is also known as a give-and-take direction. Essentially, this is a directive reminding the jury of their oath and to maintain unbiased views whilst discussing the verdict. Should the jury not be unanimous in their decision, then a majority verdict is permitted. Once the verdict has been delivered, the sentencing of the accused is left entirely to the judge. The jury is, however, permitted beforehand to influence the judge's sentencing in order to make it more lenient. Accordingly, a recommendation of mercy is added to the jury verdict. Whether the judge takes this into account is entirely up to them. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the listening test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the listening answer sheet.